Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with a tactics tutorial that was requested a little while ago for me to cover uh, kite strategies and what you can do to sort of get the most out of your kiting units and how you can kite effectively in this game. Uh, quick disclaimer before I do kind of kick off this little bit of a guide. Uh, most of the stuff I'm going to be saying here is from my multiplayer perspective. Uh, there are obviously most of this should still apply to single player and campaign. Uh, the main differences of course are that in campaign the AI is dumb as a brick so a lot of the stuff that you have to do against human players to be successful you don't necessarily have to do against AI. And on the flip side in campaign your battles might be 20 or 40 stacks so the amount of micro you can invest in individual units might not be as high so some of the recommendations here especially for the uh macro decisions for units are might not be as smart against ai so do keep that in mind there's obviously a whole bunch of nuance um with any build and with kite builds uh Obviously, also, I'm not going to recommend it for, say, every matchup or anything like that. Uh, there are some factions you can abuse a huge amount with kiting. For example, uh, Chaos, uh, as well as, um, say, uh, Vampire Coast. And to an extent, you can abuse factions like Lizardmen and that sort of stuff. And there, there are some factions that are very, very weak or definitely suffer against kiting. And some factions, of course, are much better at kiting than others. Wood Elves, what we were using here for demonstration, a prime example of that. So regardless, uh, first of all, a few macro things to do with uh, kiting, with uh, kiting builds. Because the main goal with kiting, with when you're bringing a very skirmish heavy build, uh, usually you're not going to go straight skirmishers, uh, even if you can pull it off, which is honestly pretty difficult. <laughs> uh, for most factions don't have that many skirmish capable units. But generally, you, the goal is you want to pick off all the key, key targets or as many of the key targets your, as your opponent, of your opponent has as possible before you do close in for a close quarters combat to sort of do mop up or clean up at aisle nine as I like to call it. But for that, you really, your opponent has a lot of counterplay options. Obviously against slower foot skirmishers such as Way Watchers or Deep Wood Scouts or Shadow Warriors, they can run them down with cavalry and just dumpster them. If you need a Rice Guard to get on top of your Way, Way Watchers, you're screwed. Uh, you're going to lose those way watchers. They're not going to survive. Um, for skirmish cav, generally your skirmish have has shorter range than foot skirmishers, so they can kind of be zoned out that way. They also don't have that much potential damage overall. Most of them have much lower potential damage. For example, I do believe the max potential damage on uh, flying uh, some of the flying units, for example, gyrocopters, I think, with brimstone guns, only have about 5,000 max potential damage, which is very low. Um, and that's assuming every single hit hits. With, and... It, it, Armor doesn't save anything and that sort of stuff. And obviously none of none of none of that is true. You're obviously gonna be missing some and armor's gonna stop some of the damage and that sort of and there's gonna be ward saves and whatnot. Blocking it. So it's very important that when you're playing with your skirmish troops, you get the most out of your ammunition. And for that you need to, in my opinion, make sure you've selected the right sort of options. And also that you've um that you're very, very careful with your that you're very careful with your target firing, um, and that you're very careful with keeping them alive and trying to keep them alive right up until the point uh, where they've run out of ammo. Ideally, you shouldn't fight your opponent in melee with a kite build until they've closed until you've literally run out of ammo. So, first things first, how to your toggles down at the bottom. Well, first one that I would turn off is fire at will. Now, this is a normally automatically selected. And in my opinion, you don't want it. Fire at will means your units will shoot at whatever comes into range. Now, if your opponent is charging in at you with Reichsguard, you probably will just want to turn fire at will on and just let your guys mow down whoever's coming in close. But if you're trying to simply poke, let's say your opponent is standing still and you're just trying to dart in and out, turn off fire at will so you're not wasting that ammo as your troops approach. Second thing to be very wary of when you're doing this is that as your... Um, if you turn, even if you have to fire at will off, uh, turned off, and let's say my way watchers are over here. If I, for example, order my uh, way watchers here to open fire on the salon mage priest, they will start approaching, and it basically treats them as having fire at will turned on. So they will actually fire a volley, most likely, at these horned ones before they've moved into range of that salon mage priest, which is something to be very wary of when you're using your skirmishers. They can waste their ammo in this way if you, even if you have toggle of fire at will turned off, uh, because it basically treats them as having it toggled on when you order an attack move. Uh, if both units are in range, though, what you will want to do is, for example, click behind the Slot Mate Priest or around him so that they approach him, and then once he's in range, that's when you want to right-click for fire, and your guys will actually target the unit you want him shooting instead of wasting their shots on friggin' horn ones. 
which to be honest in this case would probably be the smarter decision but hey that's <laughs> this is just a demonstration run uh second thing skirmish mode now you guys may think well i'm running skirmishers so skirmish mode must be great right well no not really first of all skirmish mode means you guys are become very difficult to control sometimes if you need your uh troops to go one direction let's say there's uh horn ones coming in this way i've got way watchers uh spread out here and here i might not really want to have my way watchers just running straight away i might want them to be going a different direction let's say i've got wild riders coming in to save the day to, bl to block my opponent off then i might want my way watchers going this way but if skirmish mode is turned on they will slippery run away as far fast as they can in the wrong direction um and so you that is one reason to turn it off second of all you can often find yourself for sort of pinned off or penned off in a um stupid corner of the map that can be very frustrating. And finally, if you're playing with a th um, non-360 skirmisher, and there are some, for example, Outriders and Dark Riders with uh, hand bows or with uh, cross dark charts with crossbows, uh, they are they only have a front arc of 180 degrees. So if you don't want if you don't want them just getting constantly uh, run down and uh, just chased around the map, unable to do anything about it, then it is probably best to turn off uh, their skirmish mode. Now, obviously, in campaign, where it's a bit more stupid, and or in certain cases where you might just not feel you have the micro potential to handle things, of course, in that case, I would kind of recommend shying away from skirmish builds. But um, if you don't have the micro for it, uh, you might want to turn on skirmish mode, but it was something I would definitely warn against and basically never recommend using if you have the micro to handle it. Um, Plus, a lot of times skirmish mode, because charges kick off, uh, let's say there's a unit like right here, the horn ones, they're going to get a charge bonus as they're coming in. So, um, especially in something like, for example, Outriders, they're going to, because they're fa facing forward to shoot, they're going to take too long to start retreating. The horn ones will get their charge animation off and they're going to get into you and they're going to be able to wipe out your Outriders potentially. Uh, so stuff like that. So that's another reason why skirmish mode can be misleading. It can often not time the retreat correctly, especially if it's a non-360 degree shooter. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. As for guard mode, uh, honestly, I don't think guard mode is what you want because you will usually want your troops sort of running away or pursue or potentially pursuing enemies as they're uh, pulling in and out. So usually, I think you just want to be very much have full control of your unit's actions most of the time. Uh, so guard mode is something I'd also keep turned off. Um, obviously, if you're uh, if you just need to hold your ground and just bogging it down or whatever and keep firing, maybe guard mode is good. But I can't think of any skirmishers where you actually want to do that. Um, honestly, maybe like shades. Even that's push. Honestly, pushing it. I, I really can't think of many. Um, something like free company, but free company or, or iron drakes. But like those aren't really skirmishers you can be kiting with. Um, those are just skirmish units, and they deserve, uh, if anything, a video of their own somewhere else. So we're not really into covering those here. Uh, so that's that's the basics of what you should toggle on and off and uh, when you're setting up. Second of all, spacing, and this is kind of important. It's even more important with short-ranged skirmishers because the thing is that when you deploy, if your skirmishers are all, let's say I select all my skirmishers here that I brought, and I just deploy them like this. Now, let's say I give them a target that's outside of their range. Um, let's say I move it here, and now they got to get into range of this slot mage priest. What you're going to see is that your guys are going to start moving on top of each other. You're going to end up with your troops blobbed up, and you're going to end up with a blob like this. And then many of these units are obstructed. They're not able to fire because their own troops are in the way, and your uh, damage output is being mitigated. Second of all, if your opponent gets a charge in here, if they get some horned ones in there, they are shutting down two units of Waywatchers and a Glade Rider if they get, in, get into your line and whereas if you're spaced out if you've got your way watchers like there you got glade riders out there way watchers here whatever at most they can shut down one they're bogging them down and in the meantime they're getting peppered by these way watchers if, if these way watchers are, are whoops these way watchers are cross firing them these glade riders are cross firing them if these way watchers are fleeing some of them will probably be firing while on the while on the uh, move uh, if you just keep pinging them for them to re keep retreating and because of that your opponent is not getting the full value they need and this for some factions which have more expensive cavalry and uh, more difficulty shutting this sort of stuff down for example chaos which only has 1500 gold or 14 or 1500 gold cavalry this can be a very difficult issue uh, it can be very tough for them to effectively shut down your, all of your skirmishers at once uh, as they kind of are forced to just suffer through it and tank it with shields and uh, zoning tools and that sort of stuff um so that's one very very useful thing in my opinion 
uh, is make sure your troops are spaced out. This is even more important with short range troops. You will have to be very much on top of it. Chameleon skinks, for example, only have 80 range, so they will love they love to clump up, and it's really can be really really frustrating and really annoying. So you really want to try to space them out. Make sure they're keeping that spacing, so you're getting the maximum amount of firepower, and so that you're also preventing those mass shutdowns. Now that's kind of the basics to act what you actually want to do with skirmishers. Now, as for how you want, as for how you want to deploy skirmishers, in my opinion, unless you're running very fast mounted skirmishers uh, with 360 fire, so mounted yeomen, um, glade riders with hagbane tips are a perfect example. This is glade riders with hagbane tips are, I think, the only skirmish unit that is literally uncatchable as long as they're shooting the unit that's chasing them because they do have that poison damage. They do have 94 speed. Basically, nothing can catch them if they turn around and run. Uh, even most flyers only have 110 speed. Poison drops that by 24%. So most of those units are in the 80s for speed. And they're not going to be able to catch Glade Riders. Even if they get their charge off, basically. It's, it's pretty nuts. But barring exceptions like that, um, like these three, these very quick 360 degree fires, um, you are going to need some sort of escort units for your shooting. Now, in the case of Wood Elves, for example, which I think is a nice example here, Wild Hunters or Wild Riders in general are just a good sort of support tool. Other great support tools include Dryads, who can just soak up a charge for you. They can just body block. Uh, dryads are a very good choice because they can Vanguard alongside your Skirmishers. Um, another great example, besides Dryads and uh, Wild Riders, would also be something like... Um, of the, Van the Regiment of Renown... Uh, Wildwood Rangers, who can be deployed in Vanguard with your troops. And, of course, bring poison units. So, for example, if you've got Glade Riders with Hagbane tips alongside your Waywatchers or Sisters of Avalor, or not Sisters of Avalor, Sisters of the Thorn alongside your Waywatchers, they can slow down enemy heavy calf, make them much slower and much less effective at catching your Waywatchers. Uh, if they lose that 24 speed, then catching Waywatchers becomes really difficult because they do have 42 speed of their own. So, uh, heavy calf is not that much faster. It's about 50% faster than these guys. So, it does make quite a big difference if you're slowing them down. Um, so always have escort units for your slower sk foot skirmishers. Uh, obviously, this is going to vary faction to faction. It also varies on what exactly you expect that escort unit to do. Are you expecting your skirmishers or your kiters to bait the enemy in, and then your skirmish unit is actually going to fight it out? Which they can in some cases. Uh, for example, with Empire, if you bring Zintler's Rice Guard and get the jump on some direwolves or, or uh, hounds or whatever that are trying to harass your outriders... You're gonna run them over. There's there's no stopping that. Uh, Zittler's Rice Guard is monstrous. On the other hand, though, if you bring say Dryads to protect your troops from cavalry, really the only thing they're gonna do is soak up a charge from Sacred Alliance or something along those lines. It's, they're not going to save your save your bacon and in, uh, in a damage sense. Um, so that that is something worth keeping in mind. I think is what exactly you expect them to do. But I think you always want that escort unit um, available with a few exceptions, like those 360 firing troops, things like Pistoliers, uh, Mounted Yeomen, Glade Riders with Hagman Tips, Marauder Horsemen, that sort of stuff. Obviously, you can still escort them. Uh, it can still be a good idea, if, especially if you want to bait an enemy in and get some damage in. Um, it can be a good idea, but it's not mandatory. It's definitely not something that's uh, necessary. So, that's, that's some good stuff there. Now, once the battle kicks off... What is very important is to make sure your target pro target priority is on point, and um, for this it can help to have spells, which I guess I should have mentioned just now with the uh, protection options. But spells can be very useful. For example, Prey of Anathrema, Nets to protect your skirmishers can be very good. Uh, it can also be good to have something like Malkos Miasma or Awakening of the Wood, both of which apply slows to a unit and allow your skirmishers to stay at a distance for that much longer. But... Um, Obviously, if you're like I just said, it's very important to have a good target prioritization, and for that, things like Prey of Anthrama can be very good. Let's look at this Lizardmen roster here. Obviously, this is a totally legitimate, totally realistic roster, um, and of course, AI deployed in a completely sensible manner. But <laughs> obviously, being I'm being a sarcastic person there, but out of all these units, by far the biggest priority here are the Horned ones. If you see a battle begin, and you need to may have very good target priority. First thing that needs to go is all the units that are a major threat to your skirmishers. So if, for example, you're against Empire, and they've got a whole bunch of Reichsguard and Knights of the Blazing Sun, you need to try to get rid of them first. Zoning infantry, chaff, that sort of stuff is not that important. It's also, while you might want to pepper down a lord or a hero, just try to whittle them down a little bit, that's also, I would say, less of a priority, unless they're mounted and also a threat, than it is 
to deal with the heavy cab, or that's a very big threat to your skirmishers. Similarly, stuff like hounds and all that sort of stuff is very important to get rid of. Because once you're rid of those units, once you're rid of those centigors, those warhounds, those dire wolves, those blood knights, whatever, then you've basically got free reign usually. Then you can kind of kite away at the infantry, set up correctly, uh, chip away at any slow lords, that sort of stuff. So you need to have a good target priority. Uh, obviously, if, for example, your opponent has, and this is not really demonstrated, but let's say your opponent has silver helms and silver helms with shields, prioritize the weaker unit in that situation because both units will do about the same damage if they get into close quarters prioritize the one that's um easier to kill off the unshielded silver helms uh if you're against empire and then your opponent has rice guard knights of the blazing sun i would recommend prioritizing the knights of the blazing sun rice guard are slower they are less effective on the charge and that is very important. Knights of the Waiting Sun, if they, get, they'll, they do have that extra six or so speed, which is going to make them much more effective at actually catching you, even if they themselves are being slowed. So uh, these sort of things are very important. It's very important to have very good target priori priority with your um, shooting. Make sure to kill whatever's threatening first, get rid of it, and then start working over the other options your opponent might have. So generally, it's going to be the artillery, the light cab, and the heavy cab that you need to get rid of, followed up by monsters, high value, unshielded infantry, um, and that sort of stuff, and, and kind of go down the list. Things like chaff, things like freaking Skaven Slaves are obviously going to be very low on your list of priorities. Um, and I'm not going to go through every single option of, or possibility of a good versus bad target here, but that, those are some generalizations of what you want to do when you're facing up against an enemy roster. And that really basically sums up kiting. Um, it's important to have very good micro, obviously. Uh, you want to spread out. You want to not toggle fire at will, toggle off skirmish mode, toggle off guard mode. Uh, the fire at will can be toggled on if you're in a desperate situation. If there's a whole pack of horn ones closing in on you, toggle fire at will. Bl blast them down because your units will stop firing if they're, mo if they're ordered to move um, since they consider it a simple move movement order and they're not allowed to fire at will. So that is something important to keep in mind. Fire at will does have its place. Uh, just know that you don't want to be, if you have the opportunity to pick out targets, you don't want fire at will active, especially on very expensive, high value skirmishers like Way Watchers. Um, second of all, always have some sort of, always have some sort of, sort of spacing between your troops. You don't want your skirmishers getting caught and blobbed up on. Um, you don't, you don't want them all getting shut down at once. You don't want them losing DPS because some of the models are blocked. You want to have that gap between your troops. Uh, also, provide your troops with some sort of escort. Always pr bring some, unless they're very, very quick and basically uncatchable, like the case of Blade Riders, or they can defend themselves, like might be the case with the Lyran Reavers, against the likely things that can catch them. Always bring an escort. Uh, wild Hunters, War Wild Riders, Zintler's Reichsguard, whatever faction you have to be playing as. Dark Riders, Cold One Knights for Dark Elves. Uh, for Lizard Men, you might want to bring Krokar and a Carnosaur, or some Pterodon Riders, just the body block units, that sort of stuff. It's going to depend by faction, but you always want to bring some sort of blocking unit. And some supporting magic can help as well. So things like n Nets of M M Mintuck, uh the uh, Prey of Anathrema, uh, Melkos Miasma, Awakening of the Wood, units with poison, especially shooting poison. So things like Blade Riders with Hagmane Tips, all very, very potent and can help you uh, keep that crowd control, get as much shooting out as possible. The ideal, the ideal with a kiting build is to do as much damage as you can to the most critical targets before you run out of ammo, and you want to make sure to run out of all your ammo. You want to use up your ammo before the, the actual fight happens. Uh, so that is very, very important. Uh, besides that, target priority, make sure to kill whatever's most dangerous to you first, even if it perhaps isn't the best usage of your ammo, if you can get rid of those high-value targets or nuke them to a point where they're no longer a threat, or they'll just route off when you glare at them, that is good. That is, that is what you really want to be doing. Uh, so prioritizing things like artillery, cavalry, light cavalry, um, fl light flyers, quick flyers, that sort of stuff is very important. Enemy skirmishers in some cases. Uh, for example, against the Dawi, it might be a good idea to focus their skirmishers first. Um, that sort of stuff. So no, have, your, have a good target prioritization. It's very important. And finally, a little tidbit that I did forget about, uh, but I definitely wanted to bring up, is if you're... A kite build does not have to be Vanguard deployed to be effective. Uh, I see this a lot from people, especially when I play as Beastmen against something like Wood Elves. You're go always going to see that greedy player who with Vanguard deploys a horde of Swift Shiver Shards or Deepwood Scouts into your face, okay? Um, this is something you can pull off against AI. Don't get me wrong. AI is very consistent 
at deploying in their own zone. Even if they have Vanguard capable units, they're never going to deploy out of it. So if you're playing against AI, that's fine. But if you're playing against humans, and especially if you're playing against a very Vanguard heavy faction. Now for Empire, for example, this is not that likely, especially if you're playing a, a kite heavy faction yourself, because Empire doesn't have the best escort options. But if you're playing a faction like Wood Elves into Beastmen, and you Vanguard your troops into a point where their Vanguard can overlap with your Vanguard, you might have just lost hundreds of points or thousands of points worth of way watchers in the opening moments because you just deployed on top of like three gores and two centigores and like a hound <laughs> and, and even if you have wild riders in there you've suddenly lost a huge chunk of your army and i think that's a huge mistake that a lot of new players make with skirmish builds they get too greedy they get over anxious you don't need to do that understand that you can sit back you can deploy in the back of the uh either just barely in vanguard or even inside your zone and then you can push up you know be a little patient don't be like me. I, I know I'm, I'm kind of a bad example here because I'm a fairly aggressive player. But start safe and then push up and then start taking pot shots. Um, work work your way through your opponent that way. And um, unless you're very confident that you can win that Vanguard fight with your skirmishers, maybe you're Vanguard deploying alongside like four wild riders and you're hoping in two dryads and you're hoping your opponent <laughs> tries to fight you. Who knows? Maybe that maybe that is your plan. And if that's the case, go for it. But uh, in general, if you're just looking to kite, I would recommend being playing more, uh, playing more on the side of caution, erring on the side of caution, and deploying further back. Um, and this also kind of flows into knowing your roster as well. Obviously, while it might seem silly to vanguard to not vanguard deploy against something like dwarves, keep in mind dwarves have huge vanguard options. They could vanguard into your face with a horde of rangers. <laughs> And you're going to lose that shootout very, very badly. So keep those things in mind. Uh, and you should do well with kite builds. So this is a very basic intro, very basic guide rundown of how to work a kite build, what to do to make it work. Um, obviously, like I said before, not all this is important against AI because AI is kind of dumb as a brick and because the battles are so much bigger against AI. So there's much more to micro. Uh, obviously, if, you, if you've got 40 units to micro, you know... Even if you're not doing two 20 stacks of Way Watchers, it's a very difficult to micro that many troops. And I, if you want to use skirmish mode or just fire at will at that point in it against AI, I completely, I completely understand. I think that's completely viable. Uh, but uh, that is simply a bit of a difference there. Uh, against human players, you will generally want to do as much as possible on your own and have the best control possible. So. Uh, that is my tutorial there on kiting, my small intro. I do hope it helps you, those of you guys who might be looking into kite builds or looking to be a pain in the rear. Obviously, you don't have to go full-on kite. You don't have to go with those cancerous, what is it? Some some players are very fond of running like mass chameleon skink with masking skirmisher and then mass pterodon, and they'll bring like one carnosaur, and they just try to be a major pain in the rear, especially against factions like, Be like, factions like Beastmen. You don't have to play kite builds like that, uh, but if you just want to spice things up, if you just want to throw in a few kiting units or that sort of stuff, this hope guide hopefully helps you. It'll hopefully give you some tips. If you have any tips and tricks you yourself would like to share or you think could help uh, players looking to uh, kite effectively, be sure to post them down in the, in the comments below. Uh, so it helps. It, there's, I'm sure there's some stuff I probably missed and hopefully it helps some of you guys out. So I do thank you all for watching. Do hope you found it enjoyable and uh, informative. If you did, as usual, leave a like, subscribe, all that stuff. Leave your comments, critiques, and uh, own suggestions down below. And I will see you all in the next one. Wyvern out.